What does it mean to live a life of love? Well, to arrive at the definition of biblical love, we need to only look at love as the Bible writers use this word. The love that God possessed was not a, a gushy butterflies in the stomach type of emotion. Rather, God's great love compelled him to act decisively for our salvation. The love which God has shown teaches us how to love each other, 1 John 4, verses 10 through 11. And as with the love of God, our love is not to be a mushy uh, sentimentalism expressed in flowery words, but it's to be an active force in our day-to-day -day dealings with others. Love would move us literally to give our life on behalf of another. On a daily basis, love should compel us to put ourselves on the shelf and open ourselves to the physical and spiritual needs of others. So looking at both human and divine love, we see that love is not an emotion that we fall into or we fall out of. Rather, love makes a conscious decision to do what is best for others without regard for their worthiness or our own personal cost. True love, biblical love, sees the need of others and acts to meet those needs if at all possible. There's a popular song that states that love doesn't count the cost. But who is it that we should love? Matthew chapter 22 provides a good outline on whom we are to love. When he was asked to name the supreme law, Jesus replied with the Old Testament command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Jesus then ranked a second command along with this paramount duty, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, according to Jesus, there are two main objects that we are to love, and that is God and our fellow man. We need to make certain that we observe the right priority in loving each of these because many spiritual problems arise when we place the interest of ourself or others ahead of pleasing God. So let's start out by talking about what it means to really love God. Well, while on earth, Jesus taught that we must love him so strongly and deeply that the fondest of earthly loves becomes hatred by comparison. Otherwise, we cannot be his disciples, as he sets forth in Luke 14, 26. But how can we show our love for God? After all, God does not need anything from us in the sense that he will be impoverished if we fail to provide it. Well, we demonstrate our love for God by placing the things of God as supreme in our priorities. When we seek the kingdom of God or his church, we put them first. Whenever we put the kingdom of God, the church, first in our priorities, we are showing our love for God. When we love the Word of God, when we study, meditate, and learn from the Scriptures, when we seek opportunities to teach the Gospel to others, when we're willing to defend the truth against its enemies, then we are evidencing the deep, supreme love that we have for God. And if we truly love God, we will seek to learn His will and obey His will in all things. But what about loving our neighbors? Well, the obvious first question would be, who are our neighbors? Are they just the people who live next door to us? Are they only those people who are just like me, with whom I share a bond of common interests, likes, and dislikes? Well, when a certain lawyer asked this question of Jesus, he turned the question around, and in one of his best-known parables, he taught us to consider to whom we should be a neighbor in the parable of the Good Samaritan. In the same way, the neighbor that we are to love is anyone whose needs are in a position that we can meet. Specifically, we are to love our fellow Christians. Jesus commands us to love one another, John 13, 35. Paul strove to show how the Corinthians, uh, he strived to show how this was a more excellent way, 1 Corinthians 13, 30. Husbands are commanded to love their wives in Ephesians 5.25. Wives are taught to love their husbands in Titus 2 and verse 4. And difficult as it may seem, Jesus even commands us to love our enemies in Matthew 5 and verse 44. 
Now friends, this would be almost impossible to do if this love was simply an emotion, a warm, fuzzy feeling, then we would all have a difficult time feeling that type of emotion about someone who has inflicted or sought to inflict some injury upon us or upon someone we love. But if we understand love's biblical meaning of active goodwill to others, then we can strive to do good even for those who hate us. So yes, we see that this life as a Christian is to be a life of love, striving to love God and striving to love our fellow man. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. We pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day and a blessed weekend ahead.